News Radio 700 WLW. The Ford Motor Company has filed a patent, uh, and that patent is on drones. In specific, drones that can actually help you jumpstart a battery if your car dies on the side of the road. Yeah, uh, drones that would help you if you were in some sort of need mechanically or automotively would come in and, and help you, at least in that aspect. And I read this story and I thought, well, this is interesting. Who wouldn't, wouldn't want to be rescued if, 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 you know, someone won't stop to help you? Who wouldn't want a machine to come flying in from outer space or wherever to come down and help you jumpstart your car? But the more I read about it, the more I realized that a lot of this is just nonsense. I mean, okay, a drone flies in and uh, it examines, I guess, your battery or it looks at your car and then these, these wires descend and they hook up to your battery, they charge your battery and off you go. Well, wait a minute. Hang on one second. Does that technology exist right now? Turns out, well, um, not really. Is it practical? Uh, well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, if, if your car is dead on the side of the road, wouldn't it be easier if you have AAA, just call AAA? Or maybe hope that somebody comes by and maybe helps you jumpstart your car? Or, my goodness, if nothing else, you just call a tow truck. And the more I, I read about it, the more I realized that patents are filed all the time and largely just to block or keep someone else from doing it sometime in the future. And then I read a blog that was written by my next guest. I've had John Risby on the show many times. They call him the patent professor. In fact, he has a patent on that uh, particular title. But he is uh, an attorney, an adjunct professor at the patent, uh, patent law at Nova Southeastern Law School in Florida. And he's authored uh, several books on patents. And whenever it comes to this kind of pri uh, proprietary technology, I want to have John on the show. I'm glad he's with us now. John, how are you on this glorious day? Yeah, I'm good. Always a pleasure to be here. Am I am I reading this correctly? I mean, I I don't sense that Ford has this technology yet, but just in case they come up with it, uh, they're covered. Is that where this is right now? That you're you're 100 percent correct. Um, and it's funny. I mean, a, a bit of history in the the 1800s, the Patent Office required a working model to be submitted when you filed a patent application. And uh, clearly, you know, there's over 11 million patents now. That requirement was, was dropped uh, a, a long time ago. But uh, patents don't have, you don't have to have a working model. Uh, and the Patent Office does not review applications for practicality and, and or even if they work, absent something ridiculous, like if they defy the laws of, of science or, uh, you know, like a perpetual motion device. Something like that they they would look at, but otherwise they take the patent at face value. They're not looking at practical aspects. Um, as a as, as a lawyer, I, I can see they're not looking at liability either because this patent talks about carrying a charging block, which is kind of like a battery through the air. Uh, talk about liability. If if you've ever lifted a, a car battery <laughs> like that, uh, and you can imagine a drone flying uh, yeah. with a car carrying a car battery out to you, like if yeah. that thing falls yeah. or or you know goes through a windshield, we're talking major major what, harm. What so, could possibly <laughs> go wrong? <laughs> but in other words, if I let's say I had this brilliant idea that I was going to develop uh, a bottle that would that would uh, disperse soda from the bottom instead of the top of it and all I had to do was just hold it above my head and I, I thought it was the greatest idea I've ever had in my life are you telling me that all that I would be required to do to get a patent in this day and age is not produce said bottle but just let the people who issue patents know I had this brilliant idea and they would issue me a patent on it is that what's going on the, there, there's, there's three requirements for patentability utility uh, it has to do what it purports to do, a novelty, it has to be new, uh, and non-obviousness, it can't be obvious. But there's no there's no requirement that it be practical or there's in my fact bottle. that anybody... There's my bottle, right there. There's my <laughs> bottle idea, right there. It, 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 uh, it, it certainly seems unique and, and new. I've never heard of that. Now, whether anybody would want to lift a bottle over their head and have the, the liquid come out the bottom, you never know. I mean, that's why, you know, and there, there's examples, like rollerblading, I always think of... 
the you know the the, the patent attorney when a, when a when a, an inventor comes in and says you know what I've got a way to skate where you not only can fall uh, forwards and backwards, but now you've got a balance so that you don't fall to the left and right. And, 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 and they would go like, Eureka, that's, you've got it there. So it's, it's tough to really tell where there's uh, commercial value for an idea. But, but you, you hit the nail right on the head. That a lot of times companies are, are filing these patents really to stop uh, competitors and to get, like a, uh, get a monopoly sure. and uh, create like a patent web uh, in the industry, and that that seems to be what what Ford's doing. They have a couple weeks ago, I believe uh, I was on your show as well with Ford's patent on a self repossessing car. That's right. And this is if you fall <laughs> you fall behind on your your payments, and there's no repo man coming to get your car. So the car just drives itself off uh, uh, and returns itself to the to the bank or the the repo lot or wherever oh my these cars go. So. Uh, you know, that, now that one got a lot of backlash. Clearly, that's not popular. Uh, no, you this, don't want your car like just taking off from the driveway. <laughs> saying, I'll see you later. Sorry, you didn't make a you large payment. payment. <laughs> right. And, 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 but that's that. You know, they they in in that patent they talked about various steps. That's like the last resort. Mm. But before it does that, one option is uh, an unpleasant sound is emitted from the car radio. <laughs> this is the exact words from the the the, the, the patent document. So you can't even listen to no one could listen to your show. All of a sudden, it'd be overtaken by right. some noise that's that's annoying enough to make you go and hopefully make your car payment. Yeah, even more annoying than me. That could be a community service. We're not, <laughs> John. I mean, but you're right. I mean, let's say let, let's just say that uh, that down the road, five, seven, ten years down the road, and and again, it's very hard unless you're some sort of visionary or some sort of psychic to know exactly where technology is going. But let's just say five, seven, ten years down the road that uh, General Motors decides it wants to do this this drone thing. Well, wait a minute, Ford would say, all the way back in 2023, we, we, we got a patent on this. So, General Motors, you're going to have to pay us. So there's a monetary exchange that would happen if, indeed, that this thing actually becomes reality, correct? A hundred percent. And the way patents are written, they're written in a, a really broad sense so that technology can evolve. Uh, Ford has patents that talk about, in fact, the battery terminals being accessible from the outside without an owner even being there. So this could be, for example, if your, your battery is dead, your car dies, you may be able to just lock your car, close the trunk, close the hood, and take off, and these drones could come by uh, and recharge your battery without you even being present. That's amazing. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's just uh, the whole concept is, is crazy. We're chatting with John Risby. We're talking about, well, in this instance, Ford uh, seeking a patent on drones coming in to jumpstart your car in case you're, you're on the side of the road. You know, you know, I've had a lot of conversations. I just want to take it just just a little a little using the car analogy, a different little off ramp here. But uh, this whole thing with chat GPT and in particular or any kind of AI, it it it, it kind of mur murkies the water a little bit here. I was I've been seeing a lot about AI and Chat GPT and how things are generated and what in 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 essence is uh, creative property or or things that you have come up with. H how do how do we navigate that? Who's to say if something appears on Chat GPT that it's not something that I've already come up with or perhaps even copyrighted as as a thought amusing or some sort of you know, uh, ravings of a lunatic. Why? Where are we going with all of this artificial intelligence, in your opinion? Yeah, well, uh, in my opinion, it's making people dumber. <laughs> so the, the art of it's re replacing real intelligence, I mean, uh, you know, there's, if, imagine today there's a lot of kids that if their rear car's rear view camera didn't work, they couldn't back out of a parking space. Uh, uh, the, the blind spots on cars, you have the... the the safety devices that now alert you, but if that malfunctions, uh, you know, fewer and fewer people are looking out their windows and in uh, an actual mirror yeah. to make sure there's, there's not a car next door. So that, that's a concern that I have with AI. From a, a legal standpoint, uh, the Copyright Office has, has held that uh, a, com you know, a computer, like, and it seems like so basic, like to even have to have a holding on this, but to be an author requires that you be human and uh, a chat GPT, a computer, cannot own rights to a, 
a copyright uh, uh, under there. And this, the, the law is actually supported by, I don't know if you remember the, the monkey selfie case from a few years ago. Oh, yes. Uh, yep. a, a, a photographer's cell phone was stolen. A monkey accidentally took a bunch of selfies, and the photographer filed for a copyright claiming that because it was his phone that he should have rights to it. The copyright office looked at it and said, well, no, the uh, monkey is the person, the person, the, the, the thing, the animal that, that took the pictures and you have to be a human to, in order to be entitled to a copyright. And that's what's going to, that's a, a real obstacle to ChatGPT because uh, the, the computer is the one that's actually generating the content. Now, authors are claiming, yeah, but we're putting in the queries and the computer is no different than a, than a tool like a paintbrush for a painter. But, uh, but there's a lot of, you know, real painters, they would disagree. They'd say, well, wait a minute, you know, yes, we use the brush, but it's, a lot of the control on the brush, the artistry is us. It's different than when you use artificial intelligence and, and tell your computer, put in terms that say, draw a frog with a horse head, and then three minutes later, it's got this beautiful drawing. Well, who's the, uh, who's the author? I mean, the person that just simply said frog with a horse head, is that going to give, is he going to get rights to it? Uh, is a computer? Certainly the computer can't because uh, it's a, it's not, a, it's not human. Right, right. Imagine if that, uh, the whole painting of the Sistine Chapel went that way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just put it in my GP. No, but my point being is, is that uh, a lot of the stuff that's input into, into, the, into chat GPT, where is it coming from? Who is it that's doing that? And do they not, do they not have proprietary uh, rights to whatever is in there? In other words, you could say, give me... Um, Ten give me ten paragraphs on um, Donald Trump. Give me ten paragraphs on Donald Trump, and it could fish it out from anywhere, but where is it fishing it out from? Who's putting in the information for it to fish it out? The information, the person who generated that information, to me would seem to be the person that is the, is the proprietary owner of that right, that intellectual property. It would seem to me it would be that way. Could you make an argument that way in court? Right, right, and that, and that has been made because with... You know, after all, ChatGPT, their source material is everything pretty much online. They have access to billions of documents, and uh, and there's no credit given for their sources. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's still there are no court decisions determining that, but that's that's certainly something that I believe is going to be litigated. Yeah. Well, your your uh, your profession, it seems like it's just it's morphing daily and daily for different things. Drones and Chat GPT. If you and I had this conversation ten years ago, I don't think either one of us would know what the hell we're talking about. But here we yeah. are in twenty twenty three and when it comes to things like that, you're our guy. John, thank you so much for your time and stay well. We need to hear your voice, okay? Uh, thank you. Always a pleasure to be here.